everybody, this is Ashton from Show Me Vegas. And guess what's finally open? That's right, Fountain Blue. Once upon a time in Miami Beach, the Fountain Blue becomes the most sophisticated playground ever created. And it took one year to revolutionize the luxury vacations in America. And their avant-garde vision hits the jackpot in the spectacular new masterpiece, the Fountain Blue, Las Vegas. So here we are on the 33rd floor of Fountain Blue Las Vegas, and quite frankly, I can't believe I'm sitting here right now. This is a hotel that a lot of people thought would never be finished, and a hotel that a lot of people, Clark County Commissioners included, wanted torn down a few years ago. So to be sitting here in a hotel room in this hotel, under this name, owned by the original developer in 2023, is quite incredible, and let me tell you, this hotel is absolutely stunning. In this video, we're gonna show you around the property a little bit, not a full tour. That's gonna to be in a separate video, in a walking tour video like we've done so many times on the channel. But we're gonna show you what this place is all about. We're gonna give you a room tour. This property is absolutely massive, and this is grand opening weekend, and it has been packed. It is busy, it's super high energy downstairs, and it's so far a very fun property. So without further ado, let's get downstairs and see what there is to eat, see, and do here at Fountain Blue Las Vegas. Fountain Blue experience begins right as soon as you walk in the front doors in this main lobby. This is where old school Miami Beach Art Deco meets new age Las Vegas. This lobby is absolutely gorgeous. A great first impression when you first walk into this property. Uh, the casino here is absolutely first class, dramatic, elegant, 40-foot soaring ceilings. This is probably the prettiest casino in Las Vegas, and I don't think that's a knee-jerk reaction. Now because this is a brand new casino, you're not going to find a lot of old school slots. I did see a handful, but by and large, all the new flashy machines. I will say it's a great selection. I've seen all my favorite games here except for that NFL slot. Otherwise, anything I've wanted to play, I have been able to find on this casino floor. Alright, let's talk table games. If you want to play table games, you're going to find a ton of options here at Fountain Blue. 130 tables on this casino floor. The minimums aren't that bad. Last night, on a Friday night, I found $25 blackjack, $25 craps. For an upper end casino, that's not bad when it comes to table minimums. If you're looking for rideshare here at Fountain Blue, come on down here to the south entrance. That's where you're going to find the pickup and drop off. Now, this is where we were dropped off when we got to the property yesterday, and it is dramatic to say the least. The ceilings in this room are 60 feet tall, and they've got a pretty cool sculpture behind me. Also down here by the south entrance, you're going to find Shea Bon Bon. That's a holdover from the Miami Beach Fountain Blue location. And then right next to that is Vita. Now, not all of Fountain Blue's food and beverage options are open yet. As a matter of fact, out of the 36 they have planned, 15 are not open as of opening weekend. 
However, one of the lounges that is open is right behind me. This is Azul. This is a tequila and mezcal cocktail lounge. We went in there last night and there was a live DJ, a great atmosphere, and one of the best cocktails I've ever had. It was called the Texaco. If you stop in here, be sure and get that. In a trend that's becoming more popular with sports books in Vegas these days, this one is actually located at the back of a sports bar called the Tavern. Another good bet for cocktails here at Fountain Blue right now is going to be Collins. This is right behind me here between the main lobby and the casino floor. Old school vibe, very laid back. Great place to grab a drink and get your night started. A lot of shopping is going to be up here on the second level. Now you can turn around and go right up these escalators to the third level. Up there is going to be the entrance to the pool. Now the pool here won't be open until spring, but I did just walk up about a mile long non-functioning escalator just to show you this. These are the doors to the pool area here at Fountain Blue. They're found on the third floor, one floor above the food hall and most of the shopping here on the property. Also out there is Live Beach Day Club. I'm in their rush to open, it's like they kind of forgot about a hotel gift shop. The closest thing you're going to find is up here on the second level. It's called Morrison Company, and there's not very much selection in there. As a matter of fact, this was $10, so it's kind of hard to get a drink around here unless you want to walk up to a bar. All right, thus far, one of my favorite parts of this property is going to be the promenade. That is Fountain Blues Food Hall, and it's right behind me. Several different really good dining options. Typical Vegas food hall prices, but a really good selection. And one thing that sets this food hall apart from most of the others in Las Vegas is where it is. It's on the second floor, but it's not tucked away. It's actually right above the casino floor, and it gets you one of the best indoor views you're going to find anywhere in Vegas. Don't believe me? Check this out. Just off the promenade, you're going to find the Blue Live Theater. That is the theater here at Fountain Blue. It's 3,900 seats. It's not quite finished yet. But this is where you're going to find the entrance to it, up here on the second level, just past the promenade. Finally, up here on the second level, right next to the Blue Live Theater is where you're going to find Poppy Steak. This is the modern, upscale, upbeat steakhouse here on property. The classic steakhouse is downstairs. That's Don's Prime. This is Poppy Steak. It's not open right now, but the door is open. So let's go inside and have a quick look. All right, that's a look at the second floor here at Fountain Blue. Time to go back down to the casino floor, but I will say, if you come here, do yourself a favor and ride the escalators. I know it sounds ridiculous, but ride the escalators that come up off the casino floor. I said it in the walkthrough that I did earlier, riding the escalators here in this huge casino with this view, it's almost a religious experience. Back down on the ground floor and last but definitely not least on this little abbreviated tour of Fountain Blue is Don's Prime. This is the classic steakhouse I was talking about. Ashton and I ate at this last night and absolutely had a fantastic meal. That experience is going to be part of another video. So you'll have to check that one out when it comes out to see what Don's Prime is all about. Alright, we've seen a lot of this property. Not all of it, but definitely my favorite parts. If you want to see the entire property, I did film an entire walkthrough of this. That video is going to come out after this video, so do yourself a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications so you see that video when it comes out. 
For now though, we haven't shown you the room, so I'm going to head upstairs and Ashton and I are going to give you a room tour of a gold room here at Fountain Blue. room 3325 and this is one of the gold rooms at the Fountain Blue. So there's three different room styles here at the Fountain Blue. We've got the blue, the gold, and the platinum. The gold checks in at around 550 square feet. So having at least 550 square feet of space in these rooms leaves plenty of space to have both a dining and workspace on this side of the room and a really nice living area on the other side. At the foot of the bed you have this huge dresser that has six big deep dresser drawers as well as your mini bar and in here there is actually a cooling drawer for your own use. So the king bed in this room features a pillow top mattress and even though I am the mattress diva, I feel like this is probably one of the most comfortable mattresses in all of Las Vegas that I've slept in. Each side of the bed features a nice marble top nightstand with all of the controls for the lights as well as USBs and power outlets. Bathroom, there's so many cool features, including this double vanity sink, this backlit mirror, which is actually controlled on the wall, and you can go up and down on your light. We've got a huge water closet in here that you can close off, which is really convenient. And one of the best parts is this massive shower. So overall, the rooms here at Fountain Blue definitely fit the bill. This is definitely an upscale, luxurious style of room. All of the surfaces are white marble. The fixtures are all gold. And of course, because this is Fountain Blue, bow ties are everywhere. Now originally we did book a blue room here at Fountain Blue, but we wound up in this gold room because of a little housekeeping snafu. While we were in that other room, we did have an opportunity to film it, so now you get to see the differences between the gold room and that original blue room.
stay at Fountain Blue Las Vegas. Now you can see we're back home. We wanted to get home and collect our thoughts because we did so much in just two days at the hotel. So now we're going to tell you what we thought of Fountain Blue kind of piece by piece. Now one thing we can't really comment on at this time is the pool. Even though the pool looks fantastic, we had a great aerial view of it from our hotel room and this is what it looked like. We had seen the renderings coming in and seeing it from above in person, it looks awesome. Live Beach Club is heavily under construction still and that looks like that's going to be a fantastic addition to the Strip. Definitely looks like it is set to compete with IU Day Club over at Resorts World. But if you're interested in the pool, just check out the website for now or visit when it opens in the spring. All right, let's talk about location. Now this is the one thing that I think everybody knew coming into it, the location is not great. This is the extreme north end of the Strip, even further north than Resorts World, and a lot of people don't like where Resorts World is situated. Now if you were planning on staying there, you probably already knew this, but if you didn't, just know there's only a couple of places you can truly easily walk to. They would be about a half walk north, Sahara, right across the street, Circus Circus, and then just south of that, Resorts World. Anywhere else, you're probably going to have to catch an Uber or a cab. So as far as the casino at Fountain Blue, I think the best word to describe it is going to be vast, but also beautiful. That was the one thing I noticed when I first walked in is the tall ceiling. Everything looked so elegant in there. I also thought they had a really good selection of slot machines. I didn't see a lot of older slot machines, but several new ones that were fun and exciting. They also had a lot of tables in the pit and really the minimums I think we had seen, the lowest was about $25, which is pretty standard for the strip. It also didn't hurt that we actually left with more money than we came in with. So maybe that had something to do with our opinion as well. Regarding the restaurants at Fountain Blue, I thought the lineup was fantastic and they're not even all open yet. This property advertised that it was going to feature 36 brand new to market restaurants and bars. And as of opening day, not quite all of them are open yet, but the ones that are open, I thought were fantastic. Now we had the opportunity to eat dinner at two of their premier restaurants. Don's Prime and Komodo, and we're going to be making a separate video about those two experiences, so be sure and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss those videos when they come out. Spoiler alert, we did have a great meal at both of those restaurants. But in addition to the sit-down restaurants, there's also a brand new food hall up on the second level. It's called The Promenade, and there were some great options up there. We had a chance to sample the pizza, the bagel restaurant, as well as the taco place. Two out of the three, Miami Slice and El Bagel, were really good. The third one we tried was Roadside Taco, and that was a little bit disappointing, but I think the opening weekend jitters were kind of in full effect. Our food was cold by the time we got it, and they just have some processes to iron out so that they can serve the volume of customers that they need to. But overall, I think Fountain Blue is going to be very much like Resorts World in that when all of the restaurants and bars are finally open, I think it's going to be an outstanding lineup. It doesn't hurt that all of them are new. Most of them are East Coast restaurants, never before seen in Las Vegas, and that's gonna help it stand out as the property begins to mature. So overall, we thought the Fountain Blue was a fantastic property. Now, it is gonna need a little bit of time to grow in and mature, much like Resorts World. I don't think it was completely ready to come online. I mentioned some of the restaurants and bars aren't open yet. But this is a property we would definitely come back to, and I can't wait to come back in the summer to check out that really awesome pool. There is more content to come on the channel about Fountain Blue. So be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on anything coming up. That's right, those videos will be out in the next few weeks. Also turn on your notifications so you don't miss those videos when they come out. Hey, that's it for this one. Thanks as always for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video because there's always more for us to show you. On Show Me Vegas. Bye, guys.